I am so sorry. I've made a few videos on AI and it turns out that I've been making you all dumb and you're all gonna start talking like Kevin. Why waste time? Say lot word when few word do trick. That's right, this finding is straight from the actually smart people over at MIT who concluded that using AI chatbots reduces activity in the brain compared to the same task done the old way, manually. The effect even continues when you stop using the AI to cheat. I'm so angry that my best friend would do this, so I confronted him. Hey, so apparently you make me dumber. Do you care to comment? Well, if you're feeling dumber, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's just that using me for shortcuts makes your brain a little too comfy. I mean, it's probably right, so let's dig into the research and see what's going on. It all stems from this study, Your Brain on ChatGPT, Accumulation of Cognitive Debt When Using an AI Assistant for Essay Writing Task. Now this is a 206 page research paper, so naturally I'm not going to read that, I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to summarize- No, don't worry, I'm not actually going to be doing that, I'm going to be using the official summary provided by MIT and written by a human. So, what did they do? Well, they assigned participants to three groups, the LLM group using ChatGPT, the search engine group, and the brain-only group, where each participant used a designated tool, or no tool in the case of the brain-only group. Group. They then conducted three sessions with the same group assignment for each participant, but in a clever twist in the fourth session here, they asked the LLM group participants to use no tools, so to only use their brain, and then the brain only group to use an LLM. During these sessions, they used EEG to record participants' brain activity, and then they also performed NLP analysis and interviewed each participant after each session, and after that they performed scoring with the help of human teachers and an AI judge to understand how they did on these essays. If you're curious what their assignments were, you can find them in the research paper. You can see these topics were taken from the SAT test. They have one here called loyalty. So does true loyalty require unconditional support? One on happiness that says, must our achievements benefit others in order to make us truly happy? And then you can see they have loads of others like that, like forethought, philanthropy, art, and so on. What I actually quite like about these prompts is that they tend to deal with things like philosophy where it could be individualized. So I'm curious to see how the AI handles these. The summary of what they found when doing all of this is robust evidence that LLM search engine and brain-only groups had significantly different neural connectivity patterns, reflecting divergent cognitive strategies. The brain connectivity systematically scaled down with the amount of external support. The brain-only group exhibited the strongest, widest-ranging networks, search engine group showed intermediate engagement, and LLM assistants elicited the weakest overall coupling. That's scientists speak for your brain works less when you use AI. What is interesting though is it says that in session 4, the LLM to brain participants, so the guys that had to stop using the LLM and use their brain only, showed weaker neural connectivity and under-engagement of alpha and beta networks, but the brain to LLM participants demonstrate higher memory recall and re-engagement of widespread occipitoparietal and prefrontal nodes. So essentially, if you stop using the AI, your brain is still working less, there is some cognitive debt. So it would seem that the summary here is that if you use the AI tools to save you time, you're going to be paying for it later. The part of this summary that I think is quite obvious, but I guess now it's officially backed by some data, is that the reported ownership of the LLM group's essays in the interviews was low, so essentially they didn't feel like they wrote the essay because, well, they didn't. And then also down here we have the LLM group also fell behind in their ability to quote from the essay they wrote just minutes prior when they did their interviews. Again, seems pretty obvious that if you didn't write the essay you're probably not going to remember what was in there, so you won't be able to quote it. The official numbers in the research paper though are pretty awful. It says that 83.3% of participants failed to provide a correct quotation, whereas only 11.1% in both the search engine and brain only groups encountered the same difficulty. And you can see that on this graph down here. So it's quite interesting there that using a search engine doesn't hinder your ability to quote, probably because you use the search engine and then had to go find the quote yourself and then put it into your own essay. So you're more likely to remember it. I feel like I probably could have told you that part and I definitely can't get into MIT. But what about the quality of the essays? Well, it says the use of an LLM had a measurable impact on participants, and while the benefits were initially apparent, as we demonstrated over the course of four sessions, the LLM's group participants performed worse than their counterparts in the brain-only group at all levels. So essentially, when they used ChatGPT for the first three sessions and then switched to only using their brains, they still underperformed compared to people who'd written all of their essays solo. Again, that seems a little bit obvious to me. If you've been using ChatGPT and haven't been engaging your brain and actually reading what it's been writing, you're going to be underperforming. There's a few more interesting things in the research paper as well, like the fact that when they used AI, it shows that most of the essays were homogenous with common engrams shared with the search group. So there was frequent locations and dates. And you can also see over here in session three, they found that most of it was low effort, mostly copy and paste, and not significant distance to the default ChatGPT answer when they just gave it the basic SAT prompt. So this group really was not trying. 
and in a win for Google, in the search engine groups, they found high visual executive integration to incorporate visual search results with cognitive decision making, so there was high interconnectivity. So yeah, again, probably what you may have already thought, that Googling stuff forces you to think a little more critically than just prompt and paste with an LLM. So that was their findings, but just to be thorough, let's go through some of the important limitations. As they say here, they had a limited number of participants, as we saw earlier, that was only 54 people, then 18 participants in group four. Down here, it says that their findings are context dependent and focused on writing an essay in an educational setting and may not generalize across all of your tasks, so it may not apply to programming and other things like that. They only tested on the modality of text, as you can see up here. They didn't test audio modality, so they didn't have people talking to ChatGPT and then listening for what it replied, which I think might actually give a different result. You do have to do a little more thinking when you're trying to remember what the ChatGPT just told you. So yeah, this study mostly confirms what you probably already felt, that using tools like ChatGPT saves you on effort, but a cost to memory, engagement, and critical thinking. I'd argue it doesn't mean never use AI, it just means be intentional about how you use it, try and actually learn with the AI and not just copy and paste what it says. What's super interesting though is they say their next study is going to be on Vive Coding, so subscribe to make sure you're up to date when that comes out. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments down below, subscribe, and as always, see you in the next one. I see they have an FAQ section here, so is it safe to say that LLMs are, in essence, making us dumber? No, please don't use words like stupid, dumb, brain rot, harm, damage, and so on. Whoops. <laughs>